I'm angry now. I don't know what's going on. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the lovely Nancy Remley. Hello. How's everybody doing? So we're the Gen Xers, born in 1970s. Woo! So badass, so cool. They say studies show Gen Xers will not tolerate an unfit work environment. Mm -hmm. But being the badass, rebellious Gen Xer that I am, I'm the only one that cannot find an unfit work environment that will tolerate me. Yeah, that's right. I've been fired so many times I can't get unemployment because it's considered a pre-existing condition. Yeah. The upside, I figured out I don't work well with imbeciles. Yeah. So I'm in my 30s and they're like, oh my god, being in a relationship, it's so hard to find a relationship. But not for me. I'm so proud to say I'm in a very steady, committed relationship. And every night when I go home and get in bed, it's so nice to have those three words that just make the day all worth it. Anti-anxiety, antidepressant, and antipsychotic. Yeah. Woo! Yeah! So I take medicine because I have obsessive compulsive disorder and everybody here knows what it is. You know what it is. You think you left the stove on, you think you left the door unlocked, you wash your hands 800 times a day. Same with me. I do it all. I do it all. But I also spend three hours in the shower because my brain tells me if I don't line up the soaps just right, my house will explode. Yeah, uh -huh, that's right. Dropping the soap in the shower takes on a whole new meaning in my little world, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, it's scary. But being a little crazy, it's not all bad, you know? It's not all bad. Like when it's good, it's the best thing ever. It's like the best piece of banana nut bread you've ever had in your entire life. Perfect amount of bananas, perfect amount of nuttiness, you know? It's warm, soft, moist, tastes really good, goes down really well, you know? gets inside, your, your insides wraps around them, you know, lifts them up to the heavens and comes shooting out in a soul cleansing that can only be described as nirvana. Everyone feels good inside with banana nut Nancy. Yeah. So you're like, oh, she's a germ freak. She must have a clean job. No, I don't. Mm -mm. I work with a lot of toxic waste, hazardous fumes. Uh -huh. That's right, I'm a dog walker. That's right. Uh-huh. People are like, oh my god, you're a dog walker. It's so great. I want that job. How'd you get it? And it's actually really easy. Because like I said before, you just get fired from every other job you've ever had until animals are the only ones that accept you to their world. But I love it because I love them and I get to know like their social mores and I totally know what's going on in their head, you know, and like scent is like their main thing, you know what I mean? It's like, like I know what they're thinking, you know, they like drag me to a, a pile of poo and they're, and they're like, oh, that basset hound Stanley, he had way too many sausages last night. That's right. You know, over to a little puddle of pee and it's like, that new poodle on the block's not fixed. Bow, wow. And I think, you know, I think just like humans, one of my dogs might be gay. I think he might be gay. We'll call him Buddy. And I think Buddy might be gay because when we go for walks, every female dog, he's like, yeah, whatever, whatever. But the male dogs, oh my God, he rockets right to their penis. Rockets right to it. It's lick, 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 lick. I'm like, okay, this is a dog equivalent of a blowjob. Cool. All right, I get it. And, you know, after sometimes he throws up. I'm like, okay, first to spit, not swallow. And then I think, okay, obviously then, when other dogs smell his throw up, they're like, hey, I think Buddy might be gay. Yeah. So you're like, oh my god, she gets fired a million times, she's a germ freak who picks up poo for a living. What else? I'll tell you what else. Lazy eye. That's right. Grew up with the lazy eye in the 70s. Let me tell you something. Nowadays, we have LASIK surgery. You know what I'm talking about? You go in, they laser you, and you're good to go. Not the case in 1979, my friends. No, no, no. In 1979, the groundbreaking technique in eye medicine was a skin-colored patch. Yeah. Skin-colored patch that actually went over my good eye. Yeah. Not my lazy eye. No, we want to leave that out for everyone to see. No, this actually went over my good eye, which was better than 2020. It was like, it was like a hawk guy. It was freaking sniper good. Sniper good. But we covered it up. Covered it up because evidently it was of no use to me whatsoever. 
and we couldn't cover it up with like a like a diamond patch or like a leather patch and they'd be like Nance cool patch and they wouldn't notice my lazy eye no it was a skin colored patch so that it would blend into the rest of my face and fool everybody like it wasn't even there <laughs> except now I was just a freak with no eye on one side and a lazy eye on the other uh huh then we put on the glasses. You get out in that playground, you start sweating a little bit. Uh huh, uh huh. That patch flapping in the breeze. You know what I mean? It's hanging off, it's half off. I'm trying to stick it on there, holding on with my glasses. It's flailing all around, you know? Let me tell you, nothing screams be my friend in second grade like a lazy eye patch and glasses. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a good night. Give it up for all the comedians tonight. about you